Good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome to all of you to the second virtual version of the Right Circle. Uh, this is sponsored by Sri Simmons, and in we are doing this in association with Prabhakatan Foundation, SRS Women, and Spagia Foundation. Siahi obviously does the back end work and gets it together. I would like to very warmly welcome. Shabna Birmani and Vipul Riki are authors for uh, this evening's uh, session. Uh, they've done two very fascinating books. Uh, I'm going to leave them to talk about it and I'm going to leave all of you who are here as our virtual audience to discover the magic they weave not only in writing what they've written but otherwise also. And I'm not going to take more time to read out their profiles etc etc because um, again let them leave, leave their magic for you a very warm welcome to each one of you has who has taken out the time to join us i know we are under lockdown and i hope all of you are holding up well because that's what all of us are trying we are reinventing we are refocusing looking inwards which is why we thought shabnam and vipul will be just so apt because you need to strengthen yourself further because the days to come, the lockdown being extended in most states, we need we need their, that kind of spiritual energy coming to us. So we'll sit back and enjoy what they have to say to us. And I'm going to once again welcome Shabnam and Vipur. It's all over to both. Thank you so much. Uh... Uh, Meeta for creating this opportunity for Vipul and me to join uh, a motley gathering of readers virtually. Uh, these are really strange times, uh, disturbing times, uh, times of opportunity, I guess. And uh, what Vipul and I will do is uh, share with you moments, ideas, stories, extracts of two of the books that we've worked on together in the last couple of years, which uh, explore Bhakti, Sufi and Baul poetry. Uh, one of them is uh, on Shah Abdul Latif Bhittai, I saw myself, a Sindhi Sufi poet. And the other weaves journeys across three traditions, Bhakti, Sufi and Baul, uh, oral traditions. So uh, I'm going to hand over now to Vipul. Uh, We'll both share a few ideas, uh, maybe over 25 minutes or so. And uh, at some point, whenever it feels spontaneous and right, we'll each of us sing a song for you guys and then throw it open for Q&A. Maybe sing at the end, maybe sing, sing in the middle of the Q&A or in the middle of our talking. Let's see how that goes. So over to Vipul. <clears throat> Thanks, Rabnam, and hi, everyone. Um, it's uh, my first ever Zoom, whatever. <laughs> so it's nice uh, to reinvent ourselves, as Meeta was saying. And uh, we are all at home uh, with our devices. Uh, some of us with our loved ones, some of us are alone. And uh, some of us have food, some of us don't. Uh, and there is a lot of fear and panic that we have seen in the last uh, many days, justifiably so, because this situation is so new and unprecedented in a sense for us, at least in our lifetimes. And uh, when Meeta suggested this session and uh, Shabnam and I were discussing what we could share, uh, the thing that came to my mind to share uh, first, oddly enough, was about the idea of death. Do we think about death? Is it present in our lives now? More than ever, it is present. Uh, but otherwise, in normal times, uh, how much do we confront the fact of death? How much do we face its emotional repercussions on us? How does fear interact with this whole uh, reality? The fact of life is death. So. Um, the Sufis, the Bhakti poets, uh, Shah Latif, Kabir, all of them speak all the time about death. A lot of their poetry, uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, there are two primary themes, I would say. One is love and one is death, and they are connected. They are not separate from each other. 
so I'll just begin by reading a couple of poems about death and love. And for Shah Latif, this is from this uh, book, I Saw Myself. And for Shah Latif, love and death are the same thing. So as long as we have ourselves, as long as I exist as me, my small personality, there is no love. It is only with the idea of dying, dying to oneself, that love becomes possible. So for example, Shalatif says, these are very stark poems, so prepare yourself. I think Urvi can share some poems if, uh, as I read, you find them. So Shalatif says, the gallows call out friends, who'll walk with me to their end? Only they may come who take the name of love. The gallows call out to lovers, don't hold back. If love truly fires your loins, cut off your head, then dare speak the name of love. Then he says, if you scroll down, Urvi, if you scroll down or up, I don't know where. Yeah, here, stop. I am in love with one who carries daggers. I press ahead in the field of love, my head's on the chopping block. Now slaughter me, beloved. So I'll stop here and uh, just come back to a few stories from Latif's life. So can I go back? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, Latif as a young man, uh, he fell in love um, as happens to many of us when we are young and also when we are old. He fell in love with a girl and the girl's father in time honored tradition refused and he didn't approve of uh, Latif. So Latif was disappointed in love. He couldn't marry the girl he loved, loved. So what did he do as a young man? He left everything. He left his home. He left uh, his usual life as a high born upper class Sayyid. Um, and uh, he went and traveled for three years with the Nath Panthi yogis. And he became a yogi. So he lived like a yogi. He went to Hinglaj, he went to Dwarka, he went to all the uh, pilgrimage places that the Nath Panthi yogis go to. And he left behind his Sayyid heritage. He became a yogi himself for three years. He lived that life. So in a sense, he died to himself. And he became someone else. And then when he came back, he was a different person. You know? And then he had no problem in the same breath Speaking of Shiva and Ali, this is not uh, on the uh, document, Uri, so don't bother. He says, the naked seekers of Shiva take delight in Dwarka and head off to Hinglaj to see the goddess. Hazrat Ali leads them on. I can't live without them. I can't live without the yogis. So we see in our times how, you know, even in this time of the virus where everyone is affected in the same way, and we should all be coming together. Division keeps cropping up its head. Religions, across religions, people are fighting with each other. Who is to blame? Across nationalities, people are fighting with each other. Is China to blame? Is America to blame? Who is? To... So the blame game goes on. But is there something within ourselves where we can die to this impulse to blame someone else? Where we can die to this impulse to be right, to be me. I am the correct position. I am the virtuous person and everyone else is wrong. So this dying to oneself is a key idea. And oddly enough, when we embrace this idea of dying to oneself, dying to one's personality, the fear of physical death goes down. We see a lot of reactions now in us, in ourselves, in our neighbors, in, our, in the community around us are driven by fear. And fine enough. But is there a way to overcome this fear? So in this, uh, this translation book, uh, there is a whole chapter called The Art of Dying. And there are poems around, woven around how to die. So I'll read just one paragraph from this and then maybe I'll read a couple of poems. The Art of Dying. Several spiritual traditions and mystics urge us to die before our death. But what does this mean? What is dying before death? How is it paradoxically understood as immortality? Who dies? Who was alive earlier? Who remains alive afterward? These questions are posed by the mind, but they cannot be answered by the mind. 
because it is the mind itself that needs to die. So this idea of dying, uh, I will just read one poem by Lalon Fakir. Urvi, this is in the document, The Beast of the Mind. Lalon was a Baul poet uh, in the 19th century. He's a very famous mystic. And he writes this strange poem called The Beast of the Mind. To which corner of the earth will he escape? Who is devoured by the beast of his own mind? Even in our homes, we can see we can't escape this beast. Sneaking up, I tighten my grip. In a flash, it snaps open the trap. Then the lion roars frighteningly, assaulting the little bird of the mind. But which beast can bring what harm to one who can die before his death? Can a dead person be killed again? Dying before death is deathlessness. To be dead alive before one's death is to anchor the mind ship in the Guru Ocean. Lalon says, my minds become like a moth. It sees the light and dies in flame. So I really like this poem and uh, uh, Parvati sings it very beautifully. And the I, when you die to this, to yourself, where do you go? And the chapter in this book after the art of dying is the beloved's country. And this idea of vast open space, this land of the beloved, this call to go to another country, when we can't go outside to our parties, to our work, to our offices, to our families, to our friends, there is a call to go to another place, a much vaster place. But this place is also here, so we don't really need to go anywhere. And the beloved's country has no sun, no moon, no wind, no water, but it is the place of love. So I will read one more poem from this. Um, it's called The Country of the Sky. Urvi, if you can find it. Shall I go ahead or shall I wait for you? Yes. So this poem is called The Country of the Sky. Gagan Mandal Rades. Oh my awareness, let's go to the country of the sky. Kings don't reach there, nor their subjects. No emperor or master comes near. Death doesn't reach there, nor the web of time. No sorrow or distress comes near. Brahma doesn't reach there, nor does Vishnu. Serpent bearing Shiva cannot enter. Ladunath says, listen, Krishna, it's a whole unfragmented space. So I'll leave you with this idea of the whole unfragmented space within, un, within ourselves. And I'll hand over to Shabnam because she will build on this theme of the country. So uh, thank you, Vipul. The beloved's country uh, is such an elusive idea, an elusive space. How do we get there? Uh, when I was thinking about what, what fragments of this poetry to share in the times we are in, and incarcerated as we are in our small homes or big homes or no homes, immobilized, uh, a Kabir and a Bulle Shah poem came to mind. Kabir says, Ik sadhe to sab sadhe, sab sadhe ik jai, mali sinche mool ko to phule phale aghai. And why am I thinking of this? Because I don't know about all of you, but I'm experiencing this time as, a, as an opportunity to enter deeply into one. Because this is a strange time when uh, all the many, many, many seekings are cut off for us, right? There's no scope for dissipation. There's no scope for distraction. If we are restless, there's nowhere to go. So this is the time to seek the one. Kabir says, if you seek the one, ek sadhe to sab sadhe, then you get them all. But if you seek the all, you lose even the one. 
if the gardener waters the root, then the plant comes to fruit. So uh, the image that we mostly uh, spend our time watering the leaves, but not the root. Bulisha says, Pad pad alam fazil banyoi, kadi apne apnu padhyai nai. Paj paj vardai mandir masiti, kadi dil apne vich vardai nai. He says, uh, You've, uh, this is translated in our book, but let me cast it a little bit in the context of uh, the now. You've sought to understand the world. You've sought the knowledge of the world. You haven't sought the knowledge of the self. Uh, you run and you rush about from temple to mosque, from office to friend. You never really entered your own self. Ime rose shaitan na ladai, kadi nafsi na ladiai nai. You go about uh, setting problems, setting right the problems of the world, finding the, the wrongdoers, but you never wrestled with the wrongdoer dwelling right here, your own nafs, your ego self. Bulia asmania urdia urdia fadadai kadi jeda ghar betha unu fadiai. You grasp and you scramble to grasp what is flying in the sky, but you never really grasped what was at home. So this is really an opportunity, isn't it? We are all at home. Uh, and uh, imprisoned. So I'm going to tell you very briefly a short story from our Shah Latif book, uh, a parable, if you will, uh, a myth, a legend about a woman called Marui who was imprisoned. And I was interested because I thought, let's, let's tell the story of Marui at this time and see what consonances emerge for us. Here is Marui, a Rabari woman, a, a simple village woman. Uh, Rabaris, if those of you who've heard this term know that these are nomads, they're herders. Uh, they live lightly upon the land. They have barely any possessions. This is significant. Marui belongs to one such uh, community. A king of a neighboring kingdom, Umar, kidnaps her. He's en entranced by her beauty and he whisks her away and asks her to be his queen. And she says, no, uh, take me home. I just want to be with my people. So he imprisons her in a fortress. And she spends almost her whole life imprisoned, steadfastly refusing the overtures of King Umar and pining for her homeland, for her origins, and uh, refusing the wealth of the kingdom of King Umar. So to begin with, I feel this, uh, uh, this story is celebrated Marui's chastity is celebrated, that she didn't give in to the overtures of Umar. Eventually, he takes her home. But uh, the way Vipul and I have read and understood this story and the way it is understood in the oral traditions of Shah Latif, uh, her chastity or her being untouched is more uh, to do with the purity or the frugality, the simplicity of the life that she left behind. And this becomes a big metaphor in Shah Latif, where he invites us to seek the simplicity of our origins. And in a sense, the being shut at home, I am experiencing it again as being stripped uh, to bare essentials. Again, there are not too many options. You may not be getting all the kinds of things you want to eat, uh, the kinds of places you want to go. So you are just you, you may not have the, the help you need in the house. So you're touching earth, you're touching food, you're cooking for yourself, you're cleaning for yourself, all your needs. Uh, you're touching something more elemental uh, at this time, which is what Shah Latif tells us, Marui uh, yearns to return to, the simplicity of her land. So just one poem about uh, the Marus 
that she speaks about. Urvi, can we have the first uh, page? So yeah, destiny captivated me. She's stuck in the fortress. We are all also captured by destiny in the form of coronavirus right now. Destiny captivated me, why else would I be here? Fate brought me here to this place, but heart, body, breath belong to them. O King, let Marui return to her people. Let's scroll down. They are joyful with little, and live content, and yet they are physically strong and resilient. They wrap their bodies with rough blankets and move about without heaviness of ego. In Malir, the name of her home, you can feel the power of the herdsfolk. Scroll. Herdswomen don't wear silk. Rough gowns please them more than fancy shawls or brocade. O oh, Sumra, I choose the wool blanket over your gilded offerings. Let me die of shame if I abandon the legacy of my ancestors. Scroll. Desert women wear black bangles. Gold for them is a harbinger of woe. With my people, penury is a privilege and hunger, happiness. So, this is only just one, one flavor of this story. You can come back to me now. Uh, in the imagination of Shah Latif, why does he choose this tale of uh, Marui? The figure of someone trapped, imprisoned in a fort. Uh, in his imagination, the fort is our body. Marui is the ru, the soul. And Umar, the king, who is holding her captive is this mind that Vipul just spoke about, that uh, uh, avaricious, graspy, uh, egoic mind, uh, which seeks to constantly entrap the soul uh, into all manner of uh, attachments. And uh, the figure of Marui, a Rabari girl, uh, really symbolizes lightness, not the heaviness of being in this world uh, entangled as we are by the baggage of too many attachments. So where does this, uh, this story come from? It comes from a creation myth in Islam, where, uh, which Abdullah Hussein Turk, our uh, friend who is no more from Kutch, who opened the gates of Shalati for us, he recounted this parable to us. This creation myth, actually, it's not a parable. When Allah set about creating the earth, he fashioned the sky, the earth, the mountains, the winds, the water, and then putting the elements together, he created the body of man or the human. And he sent the ruh, the fifth element, the soul, to go and live in this body of man. So when the Rue came to this body, she found it to be a rather dark and dingy, uninviting sort of place. So she immediately went back to Rab Khoda. And she said, I'm not gonna stay there. So then he sends her back again, but this time with a trick to lure her to stay in the body of man. He takes a piece of himself, a Noor Ka Tukra, a fragment of light, and he places it in the body of man and says, now go check it out. And when this time the soul comes and enters the body of man, she likes it here. She really does. So then Rab says, okay, all you rules are ready. Now go and live in the bodies of human beings, but don't ever forget who your true love is. Who is your true love? He asks at the time of creation. And they all answer you. And he says, don't forget that when you go. What happens is that most of us, our souls get super entangled and we forget. Marui living in that fort never forgets. That place of origin, that place of simplicity, that place of uh, 
uh, truth of the self, which gets clouded over with all these, the graspings that we do when we come here. Kabir says in another, so when uh, Abdullah Bhai tells us of, about the myth, when Israel, when, the, when death comes to take uh, the root away from the body, she clings, she's not ready to leave. Uh, she, she likes it here, she has too many attachments. So she's forgotten that original promise. So, uh, so Kabir also says something similar. similar. Is my voice, is my voice creating a huge echo? It's yeah. breaking up a little bit. Yeah, your voice is breaking up a little bit. Yeah. Now it's fine. So I'm, uh, is it okay now? Yeah. It's fine. So Kabir now. says, uh, Hansa tu to sabal tha. Halki teri chal. Oh, swan, you were so strong. So light was your gait. Rang kurange rang liya. Bahut kia lagwal. But after coming here, you have streaked yourself in many, many, many colors, many dirty colors. You've just taken on too many lovers. So in a sense, that's what uh, the whole parable emerges in Shah Latif's uh, imagination, this idea of remembering who your true love is and returning to that, uh, the strength of that simplicity, the strength, if you will, of that lightness, of being stripped bare of unnecessary complexity and baggage. So let's go back to the poems again. Uh, scroll down. So this is a series of poems about the creation, sort of evoking that creation myth. Am I not your truest love? Hearing those words, I answered yes. In that instant, my heart was pledged to him. That's a typo. No call to be had rung out then. No ether, no flesh, no Adam, no form. It was then, in that moment, that I met with you, my Lord. Scroll. No call to be had rung out then. No moon, no sun, no virtue, no sin. Just one, only one. It was then, says Latif, that Allah unfurled the riddle. I grasped the mystery. I saw, I felt his presence. So, uh... I think I'm just going to stop here. Uh, you can, I'm going to just end with the idea of uh, when we are released from our imprisonment today or tomorrow or a week later or a month later, would we be able to reimagine or re-understand the idea of uh, freedom and possibly understand it in a reverse way that when we are free, we might realize that all the things that we are free to do, perhaps were shackling us. And this imprisonment has created an opportunity for us to quest for and understand the true nature of freedom. Because Bulle Shah and Shah Latif and Kabir and Marui, they didn't need a coronavirus to seek solitary confinement. They had that... Uh, that longing, that, that strength to go uh, solidly in this inward journey to that beloved's land, which Vipul was referring to. So uh, I think we'll stop here uh, and yeah. open it up for questions. Um, Shabha, maybe I just uh, wanted to share a couple of stories and sing the song before we open to questions. Okay. Yeah. So uh, just to come back to the, so I'll just share a couple of stories and then I'll sing a song of Kabir and then we'll open to question. Um, so there's a very interesting story from Latif's life uh, where, um, you know, he became a, a fakir and he used to, he left his village. He went to live on a mound or a sand dune, which is bit. That's why he became bitter. 
And of course, this upset the religious clerics, the mullahs, the orthodoxy. So many people used to come to visit Latif. And once upon a time, a person came to him and said, uh, Sain, everyone used to call him Sain. And he said, Latif Sain, everything else is OK. What you say is OK. And all this is love is fine and death is fine. But tell me one thing, very important. So Latif says, yeah, OK. What is more important than love and death? He says, are you Shia or are you Sunni? Sunni. So Latif says, I am in between. So the man says, but Sai, there is nothing in between Shia or Sunni. So Latif says, precisely, I am nothing. So this idea of being nothing, what Shabnam was saying, being reduced to bare essential, being reduced to simplicity, simplicity touching the essence of oneself becomes possible. Um, when we are in this kind of uh, situation. There is also a story which uh, is we quote in the Latif book, which is by Rumi. And uh, this he tells the po story of this parrot from India, which was incarcerated at a merchant's home in Iran. And this Persian merchant had this parrot from India. And once upon a time, he was going to India to do some business. So he says to his parrot who was caged, he tells the cage parrot, I'm going to your land. Uh, do you want me to bring you something from there? And the parrot says, no, don't need to bring me anything, but just take my message uh, to my brothers in my homeland. So the merchant says, sure, what is your message? And the parrot says, my message is that I'm trapped here in this cage and I have lost my freedom. The merchant says, is that all your message? He says, yes. So the merchant goes to India, he does all his business. And once he's going through the jungle and he spots two parrots on a tree and he remembers his task. So he spots these parrots and he says, listen, I have a message from one of your brothers who lives with me in Persia. And he tells them the message. And when the parrots, they hear the message of their fellow parrot from Persia, they flap their wings and they drop dead. And the merchant is amazed. How did these parrots drop dead? just by listening to the tale of their fellow parrot back in Iran. So he goes back home. When he reaches home, uh, the parrot is waiting. And he says, did you give my message to my brothers? And the merchant remembers and he says, yes, I did. I spoke to some of your brothers. And he says, what did they say? He says, they didn't say anything. They just flapped their wings and they dropped dead. So the parrot, who is caged, when he hears this, he also flaps his wing and he, wings and he drops dead. So the merchant is amazed, what is going on? He doesn't understand the situation, but in the end, he is left with a dead parrot. So what does he do? He takes the dead parrot and he throws him out of the house. As soon as the parrot is thrown out of the house, it takes flight and it flies away. So it's freedom, what Shabnam was talking about, freedom. What is real freedom? And he says, as he's flying away, that I understood the message of my brothers. To die before one's own death is deathlessness. So let me uh, share one song with you, then we open to questions. And Shabnam might share a song during the questions or at the end of the session. So this song is by uh, Kabir, and it describes this uh, paradox of human life, where this, the ultimate unit with which we live is this body. As long as there is this body, there is life. And this uh, song says, Hi kayam. What is in this body? And he says, this body contains beautiful things, such beauty. But at the same time, it is so fragile, so impermanent, so ephemeral. So he says, Hi kayam me bartan maati ro, phuti jase nahi kare ran ko. Saheb hamko dar lage wa din. This body is like a pot of clay. It will shatter one day and not make this beautiful sound anymore. I fear for that day. Even Kabir is afraid. He says, I am afraid of that day. Beautiful string of pearls in this body. But the beautiful thread holding these pearls together, this breath, that will snap one day. 
Mriga Chari Jase Rodo Vanko. In this body, a beautiful flower garden, but one day it will be grazed away by the deer. Ye kaya me heart bajara, sauda kari le rudo palro. In this body, a bustling marketplace. You can't go to the market, but what about this one? He says, strike a good bargain of each moment, each breath. Kahe kabir suno bhai sadho, pehla hai naam alak. Kabir says, listen, seekers, the first, the foremost, the most important is the alak, the invisible, this energy, this higher truth which surrounds us. So while I sing, Urvi, maybe you can share the document, which has both the words and the translation. Uh, not possible to have both together. Uh, well, like I had in the. Any any way you do is fine. Eji Marta Marta Jagmua or Marina Janko. ऐसी मरनी मर चलो फिर ना मरना हो कबीर says the world keeps dying 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 endless death but there is no one who knows how to die he says ऐसी मरनी मर चलो die in such a way that you never have to die again Bajara, 
आठ बाजारा सौदा करील हो उड़ो बल रे साहेब हमको डर लवा के एक बिंदु एक हीरे दिन को गाड़ी रे पाला करो एक हीरे दिन रो गाड़ी रे पाला करो मेरे भरोसों की पल तो साहब हमको डर लगे एक दिन एक दिन आप से सब ने बुलाव से एक दिन आप से सब ने बुलाव से लेखाले से हो डाली कल साहेब हमको डर लागे एक कबीरा सुनो भाई साधो कबीरा सुनो मेरे साधो पहला है ना साहेब हमको डर लागे एक एक हीरे दिन रो गाड़ी में पाला करो एक हीरे दिन रो गाड़ी में पाला करो मेरे भरोसों की पल को साहेब हमको डर लागे एक दिन अरे साहेब हमको डर लगे एक दिन अरे साहेब हमको डर लगे एक दिन I hope the sound was clear. I think as okay. best as it can be on a Zoom. So let's let's open it up for questions. If there are any questions or comments or um everyone listening in there's an option to raise your hand at the bottom of your screen in case you'd like to say something you can click on that and i'll give you access okay we've got a candy singh uh, coming in travel in sindh while you were researching for the book and if you did what was it that stood out most while I mean, did you deal with bards? Spoke to them. We would. I mean, I would request you to share that with us. Did we speak with bards? Can is you hear me? The process of uh, research is that. Yeah, what yeah. You... I mean, what I mean is. Like, what... Yes, yes, yes. I mean, what was that experience which stands out most? I mean, we would love that if you shared that with us. Really, actually, uh, uh, the book. Did you travel around? Yeah. Yes, uh, we traveled in Kutch, uh, like we share in the book in great detail. Uh, our research emerged from the oral traditions of Shalatif in Kutch district of Gujarat. Uh, unfortunately, the way things are in this world, we could not breach that invisible border, that line separating okay. us from the larger. uh field of sindh which is in pakistan so we couldn't visit yeah. bitla darga and we couldn't go across the border so we we stuck to sharing our uh, side of the border experience and it involved meeting a lot of uh 
oral intellectuals, oral scholars of Kabir, uh, people in villages who may not have read, not Kabir, sorry, Shah Latif, uh, may not have read Shah Latif, but have imbibed him through songs and the oral tradition of Shah Latif. And uh, I think it's that flavor that we bring through in the book. The book is not just Shah Latif's text. It is about how this body of verse uh, thrives in people's in the community. So any one experience which stands out, which you would like to share with us? Any one experience? Mm -hmm. from, yeah, I mean, which is uh, from uh, interacting with these oral intellectuals. Oh, there are so many. Is anything striking you, Vipul? Uh, something with uh, Abdullah Bhai. I mean, most of our uh, insight comes from Abdullah Bhai, who is unfortunately no more. He didn't see this book. But uh, we spent a lot of time with Abdullah Bhai. And this is, uh, uh, he seemed to live on beedies and chai. And mm -hmm. he was, didn't care about food. He didn't care about uh, timings for food. As long as he had chai and he had his beedie, he was eager to tell stories. And then he would just launch into one story. And then this story would go around in a big circuit. It would incorporate the history of Sindh, uh, what happened in Kach, what happened in another part of Sindh. And then, uh, you know, come back to the story of, let's say, Sohini Mehar or Umar Marui or something, then go into his personal story or some historical anecdote. And then uh, sometimes he would burst out crying while he was reciting some baits of uh, Latif. So to, to see him, the passion that he embodied, and he drew so many people, all the singers that who sing Latif considered him uh, their Murshid, their Guru. Um, and uh, he also sang himself, but it was primarily his passion for Latif. And he could just say bait upon bait. Uh, and that, I think that passion infected us the most. And you feel that passion in the field, being with someone. I mean, of course, we try to capture it in the book, but uh, it, in the field, you feel it in your body. And everything has to be felt in this body. You know? mm -hmm. Um, so Could you. you recite something for us from what? Well, maybe we should recite the 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 bed that inspired the title of this book, which uh, is what we actually end this book on, where he says, "Paane hi pase paan ke, paane hi mehboob, paane hi khalkyo khub, paane hi talab tahi jo." Uh, I saw myself, I was the beloved, I made this world, I myself seek it. Are you a Sindhi? Um, sorry, she's on mute, just give me a second. Okay. No, I'm not a Sindhi, but I've traveled to Pakistan in 2015 and Sindh in particular. And I'm very fascinated with... Um, uh, the writings of Shah Abdul uh, Bittai, but though I've not read very much on him that much, but I visited the shrines and it's a very, very intriguing subject. Yes, very fascinating. Thank you. Thank you, Candy. Uh, we've got one more question coming in from Yash. I'm just adding him. Uh, hi, Shabna, Shabnam and Ripul. This is Yash here from Bangalore. I actually don't have a question. I just wanted to thank you both for uh, sharing these beautiful Sindhi songs with us. Because I'm actually a Sindhi and I happen to attend your, uh, both of your uh, events in BIC in Bangalore and Jan. Okay. And since then I've been, you know, uh, head deep into the world of these Sindhi mystical poems. I didn't even know that these poems existed before then. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to say thank you for uh, sharing these poems because it really strikes a deep chord within me being a Sindhi as well. And I'm very jealous of you guys that you got to spend time with uh, Abdullah Bai and everyone. And even I hope I can go to Sin one day and visit uh, Shah Abdul Latif Bithai and Melo one day. So, yeah, just thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yash. In fact, uh, I must uh, uh, signal to you that uh, Vipul and I have worked for several years along with others at the Kabir Project on creating an online web archive called Ajab Shahar. Uh, and we urge all of you to go there, ajabsheher.org. Uh, 
almost uh, two decades of our work is being systematically translated and uploaded on this uh, website. And, uh, you know, when you said you had no idea about these poets and this, this vast tradition of music, it is true of every part of this land that there is a rich oral literature that uh, students of literature in Indian universities certainly don't uh, know of. Uh, and we are very excited that the Ajab Shahir archive is now becoming a reference text uh, for universities to start teaching courses in oral literatures of, of mystic poetry. So uh, there's a, there are incredible riches out there. If you want to plumb them first virtually, you can go on to Ajab Shahir. And then, of course, you should make the, the trek on foot. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Yash. Uh, do we have any more questions? Uh, we've got a question from Meeta Singh. Hi. Hi. Um, uh, uh, thank you, Shabnam and Vipul and Siahi for, uh, right, Circle for organizing this. It's really such an enriching afternoon. Uh, but I was reminded of uh, the, uh, the composition by Kabir, Haman ka yaar hai hamme. And I think that is so uh, topical in these times and it fits in. And I was wondering if you can sing that for us, Shabna. Sure, sure. We can maybe take a few more questions and then as we draw closer to the end, I can maybe end with that song. Yes. Would love to sing that, Meeta. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay, we've got a question coming in from Ms. Anukler. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, hi Shabnam, my old schoolmate. And hi Vipul, it was beautiful hearing both of you. And this is absolutely wonderful uh, sitting in Jaipur to be able uh, to hear such mysticism, such beautiful voices and such knowledge. I really wish as a student of literature, this world was unraveled to me. And uh, definitely uh, this mystic poetry is something which is not taught in university or wasn't taught earlier when we were young. And this uh, kind of uh, viewing and hearing has uh, urged a sense of curiosity, even though it's long distance. And um, I'm going to reveal in this. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Meeta, you're great. Thank you so much, all of you. Thank you. As we speak about uh, written traditions of mystic poetry and universities and all of that, let's take uh, a moment to remember Kabir when he says, Likha likhi ki hai nahi, dekha dekhi baat, dulha dulhan mil gaye to phiki padi barat. So this is really not something to be read and written about, even though here we are, Vipul and me, spending years uh, of scholarship and writing uh, to put this out there. I guess that's also the irony of Ajab Shahid, which freezes uh, a very fluid, dynamic oral tradition that's changing and evolving all the time. And then we do a recording and we freeze it and we put it out there. It has its role. But really these mystics are urging us to an experience that lies beyond uh, cognition and comprehension through the uh, the cerebral cortex. So can we come a little closer to the experience of the dulha and the dulhan mili meeting? Because that's the real thing. And stop being Bharatis. Yeah, you know, this uh, Shavnam, this is like Kabir himself because he keeps saying it can't be said. Akhat kahani. Akhat kahani prem ki kachu kahi nai jai. Gunga keri sarkara bet him sky. Like it's sweet but you cannot uh, uh, taste sweetness without tasting it. You can't talk about it. Yeah. So he keeps saying it can't be said, but he keeps saying it. So we are like that. We keep saying it's not about writing, reading. We keep saying it's not about intellectual knowledge, but at the same time, these are means uh, for things to get embodied in us. But yeah, the, the final destination is that if it's not embodied, this knowledge, then it's in the oral traditions, they say if the knowledge is not in the body, it's meaningless. So that knowledge has to be in this body. And there are so many songs about the body and how the body contains everything. Um, let's take one last question before we go on to that song. 
this is from Ms. Hina Mistri. Uh, uh, hello, ma'am. Hello. Uh, thank, thank you so much, Rupul sir. I am grateful to you that you took me. Uh, like, वो कहते हैं कि एक लव को द्रोणाचार्य जी मिल गए तो मुझे आप दोनों मिल गए ऑनलाइन प्रोसेस में कि लाइक पीपल से अभी ने कौन सुनता है सिंस माई चाइल्डहुड आई एम लिस्निंग कबीर जी एंड रहीम दास जी मीरा तो नो वन टेक सच इंटरेस्ट बट यू गेव अच्छ अ गुड प्लेटफॉर्म कि इतनी अच्छी पोएम्स आप बोलते हैं लाइक रिसाइड करते हैं और दैट्स इट लाइक मुझे तो मैंने कभी सोचा ही नहीं था आपको इस तरह मैं देखूंगी भी इट्स माई फॉर्च्यून दैट आई एम बींग अ पार्ट ऑफ दिस मीटिंग Thank you. Thank you, Inu. Yeah. Uh, uh, do you want to take one more question before you? We, we haven't had many questions. Lot of praise, which is nice, but <laughs> actually okay. very <laughs> questions. <laughs> okay. So, Miss Padmaja. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is Padmaja. Uh, you know, I'm very fascinated by the whole idea of deathlessness and uh, dying to oneself. And. Uh, idea of deathlessness can you hear me yeah 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 uh dying to oneself and um, i very distinctly remember uh watching had and had uh you know one of the movies that you made uh seeking uh, ram and uh it's it's unfortunate that even today in the midst of crisis there is still that divide that's happening that's people uh, that people are kind of uh, uh resorting back to uh right and i somehow i'm sitting here with this comfort where we might be talking to converts or people who are like craving for this whole idea of going beyond cognition uh but how does this message kind of reach beyond to those people who really need to be hearing this uh right people who are kind of resorting to the whole divide resorting to uh ego uh what should i say uh, just the indulgence in ego and not rising above when we should be right because this is the time when actual transformation can happen um yeah, padma ji thanks for the question i'd just like to say one thing before shabna mad something yeah uh, you know this idea of that someone else needs to hear this the idea is that you we need to hear it i need to hear it and the, this worrying about other people needing to hear it and you know when will they hear it and when will they become better and i think this is like a chimera you cannot this cannot be uh, achieved because not the, the the goal to achieve here and transformation spreads out from here so of course we reach out in our ways through films through the online website through concerts through various ways to make sure everyone hears but the more important question i think is which also relates to your disturbance and my disturbance is am i hearing this and how does how is this hostility uh, discord hatred whatever in me not just out there in someone else of course it's also there but also it in me so that we should not according to me this is how i see it in myself we should not lose sight of this also yeah i i would have just said what vipul said uh maybe i will say that uh it's a really uh with the mystics you find a fierce inner and outer gaze going at all times uh there is no message that only needs to be preached out there for sure uh that's definitely the starting point the message the idea has to be uh interrogated within uh but having said that all these guys are not sitting on some himalayan peak in meditation they are not they have not taken samadhi and withdrawn from the world they are all uh, deeply engaged people uh, otherwise kabir wouldn't have been saying suno bhai sado he is reaching out he is wanting to tell people something about uh, their folly that is leading to so much sorrow so yes we do both we 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 keep the gaze going constantly inner and outer thank you thank you uh i think that's all we have time for uh if you want to go to that song okay uh 
So. The song that was requested is actually a very beautiful Kabir song. For those of you who haven't heard the, the words, it... Uh, Kabir says, Haman hai ishq mastana, Haman ko hoshiyari kya? Rahe azad ya jag se, Haman dunya se yari kya? That beloved that I am seeking is right here within me. I don't need to be clever anymore. I'm free of this world. I don't need to be in bed with her anymore. Jo bichhade hai piyare se, bhatakte dar badar phitte, hamara yaar hai humne, haman ko intizari kya. Those who are separated from their truth, from their own true selves, they wander from door to door. I have discovered my beloved, my own true self. I'm not waiting anymore. Napal bichure piyare se. Napal bichure hum piyare se. Napal bichure piya hum se. Unhi se neha lagi hai. Haman ko bekarari kya. Not for a moment is this communion interrupted. Why do I need to be in torment anymore? Kabira ishka ka maada dui ko dur kar dil se. Kabir says, get drunk on love. How? By reading your heart of duality. This me versus you. Me who got the message, you who didn't get the message. Me upper, you lower, me black, you white, me Hindu, you Muslim. All, all these are dualities that we need to free ourselves of. Then we can get drunk on love. Jo chalna raha nazuk hai, haman sir boj bhari kya. Because this path of life is really treacherously narrow and slippery. You can't carry such a heavy bag baggage of duality on your head and make it. So this uh, composition was created by a wonderful singer and musician, Bindu Malini, based in Bangalore. Haman hai ishq masana Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you all for being here and taking out this time to listen. Thank you so much, uh, Shabnam and Vipul. Uh, that was indeed mesmerizing and enough food for thought. I think we all need to look inwards and find ways to recognize ourselves, the sense of self. And uh, uh, the whole concept of deathlessness was something. Um, although obviously I read the manuscript and read the book when it came, but to revisit is at, at such an apt time. I think it was just beautiful. Thank you so much once again, both of you for taking out time. And I'd like to thank all our audiences. Um, do send in your thoughts and responses, whoever was there for the event. And uh, we'll see you. We'll announce the next virtual right circle very soon. Thank you, everyone. A special thanks to both our authors. Thank you. Thanks, Nita. Thanks to CIA. Thank you.